It's done. Give me the vaccine, you greedy son of a bitch. No, 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 no. You, Print Man. I like that. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Now drop the gun! This would be worth millions. But, well, uh, you know how it is. City's about to explode, and you can't put a price on life. <laughs> Good luck! Nikolai! Money makes the world go round and motivates some individuals to engage in questionable activities for the sake of profit. We will be exploring a character in the Resident Evil franchise who can be described in this manner. Welcome to episode 6 of my lore exploration, morally dubious Resident Evil characters, Nikolai Zinoviev. Nikolai, a character first introduced in Resident Evil 3 in 1999, was originally from Moscow, Russia, and was a member of the Spetsnaz. His time in the Russian Special Forces remains largely shrouded in mystery, although it is likely that he took part in political assassination missions, amongst other activities. Nikolai became a member of the UBCS, or Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, a military unit of the Umbrella Corporation which mainly became responsible for handling disasters that resulted from the corporation's in-house products. He also had a relationship with Sergei Vladimir, an executive of Umbrella. At one point, Nikolai encouraged Sergei to sell 10 clones that were in his possession to the Umbrella Corporation. For more information on Sergei, feel free to check out episode 5 of this series. I'll put a link in the video description. Of course, one of the most significant events in the Resident Evil timeline is the widespread T-virus outbreak in Raccoon City in 1998. The UBCS had been deployed in Raccoon City with the primary objective of rescuing surviving civilians who were trapped in the doomed town. However, Unbeknownst to even some of the members of the UBCS was the fact that a group of individuals tasked with monitoring various divisions of the Umbrella Corporation had also infiltrated their group and were responsible for destroying evidence as well as surveillance and combat data collection. Nikolai was a monitor who was responsible for collecting combat data from the UBCS. Without a doubt, Nikolai's role as a monitor is connected to his relationship with Sidgate. During his time in Raccoon City, Nikolai is depicted as engaging in a number of activities for the sake of monetary gain. As stated previously, Nikolai was a monitor who had infiltrated the UBCS and as such was tasked with observing fellow soldiers and how they fared against the zombies and other creatures in the doomed town. He was to collect combat data as well as to ensure that evidence potentially linking Umbrella to the outbreak was destroyed. Throughout Resident Evil 3, Nikolai's actions are largely conducted in the shadows, with players only beginning to discover his true motivations as they progress through the game. Carlos Oliveira, one of the UBCS mercenaries encountered by Jill Valentine as she attempts to escape Raccoon City, learns of Nikolai's actions behind the scenes when he encounters Tyrell Patrick, another UBCS mercenary in the hospital. Carlos made his way to the location in order to find a treatment for Jill, who had been infected with the T-Virus thanks to an encounter with Nemesis, a B.O.W. deployed by Umbrella to hunt down and dispose of members of the RPD STARS unit. Carlos finds that Tyrell has been shot by Nikolai, and can either be confronted by the latter if he's still at the location, or can observe Tyrell being killed by explosives set up by Nikolai in a nearby safe. Jill encounters Nikolai in a building in Raccoon City Park, where he reveals his mission of obtaining combat data from the UBCS soldiers. Fighting through zombies and other creatures, Jill ultimately makes her way to the treatment plant, which served as a location designed to dispose of experimental materials worked on at Umbrella Research Facilities. While there, Jill confronts Nikolai, who reveals to her that he killed other monitors, including Tyrell, in an effort to increase his bargaining power when the time came to negotiate the pay for the information he obtained and the tasks he completed. He also informed Jill that a bounty had been placed on her, 
presumably because she was a member of STARS who was aware of Umbrella's involvement in the Arkley Mansion incident and the outbreak in Raccoon City. Depending on the choices made by the player, Nikolai's fate will differ. For instance, Nikolai could be killed by Nemesis in the disposal plant. According to a 1999 Famitsu interview of Yasuhisa Kawamura, a writer for Capcom, the reason for Nemesis killing Nikolai is that Nemesis identified the Monitor as affiliated or allied with Jill as the BOW observed the two interacting beforehand. Alternatively, players can be confronted by Nikolai who manages to secure a helicopter as his means of escaping Raccoon City. Nikolai will attempt to attack Jill, who can either shoot down the helicopter or negotiate with him. If the player chooses the latter, Nikolai flies off, presumably escaping the city. Other Resident Evil titles reveal additional activities involving the Monitor during the outbreak in Raccoon City. During Operation Emperor's Mushroom, depicted in the Decisions Decision scenario of Resident Evil Outbreak File 1, Nikolai was tasked by the Umbrella Corporation to obtain a blood sample of Thanatos, a BOW created by Greg Mueller, an Umbrella researcher who went rogue and who was operating at Raccoon University. Nikolai and a team of UBCS soldiers he led to the university were also ordered to kill the creature and recover its body or destroy it as well as the surrounding area if the BOW could not be collected. Though Nikolai was able to shoot a blood collecting device into the creature from an elevated position, Thanatos proceeded to kill the other UBCS soldiers assigned to the mission and escape. Nikolai also shot and killed Mueller, but was unable to retrieve the blood sample, allowing the protagonists of Outbreak to obtain the blood and use it as one of the components of the T-Virus vaccine Daylight. Nikolai set up explosives in the university as part of the operation, but was unsuccessful in obtaining the body of the BOW. Operation Raccoon City, a Resident Evil game originally released in 2012, follows the journey of members of the Delta Team of the Umbrella Security Service, or USS, another paramilitary branch of the corporation, as they were tasked with the destruction of evidence that could potentially link Umbrella to the outbreak in Raccoon. At one point, they run into Nikolai who explains that his team was sent into the city to rescue civilians but, quote, there's no time for that. The USS team comes across surveillance footage where they witness Nikolai shooting a fellow UBCS member and leaving the mercenaries with him to die trapping them in a room with zombies. He later confronts the USS team, setting liquors upon them as well as laying traps as they attempt to accomplish their mission. Nikolai ultimately reveals to them that he is part of Operation Watchdog and that he is seeking payment for the combat data he has collected. It's important to note here that there are aspects of Operation Raccoon City that are not canonical. For instance, Leon Kennedy can be executed at one point in the game. As such, whether additional events, including those involving Nikolai, should or should not be considered canon, requires official word from the game's developers. Intriguingly, Biohazard 3 Last Escape Official Guidebook, Complete Conquest of Nemesis, offers a few additional tidbits about this ruthless and money-hungry character. Recall that Umbrella had two military units that served their respective purposes. The USS was mainly deployed and worked in the shadows, while the UBCS were a more public face of the corporation. Hunk, a member of the Alpha unit of the USS, had been deployed to obtain a sample of the G-Virus. He was ultimately the lone survivor of his unit and had developed a reputation for accomplishing missions despite incurring heavy manpower losses. Nikolai exhibited a similar survival pattern and as such, the two individuals were viewed as rivals within the Umbrella Corporation. In addition, while this next tidbit did not make it into the official lore of the series, the official guidebook describes how Nikolai and Mikhail Victor, captain of the UBCSD platoon, were intended to be brothers, with Mikhail being the good guy and Nikolai being his evil counterpart. If you've seen other episodes in the series, you know that I tend to refer to translated versions of the original Japanese in-game files because the Resident Evil series is somewhat notorious for having significant errors and inconsistencies in their English counterparts. An intriguing difference can be found in Resident Evil Survivor, a first-person shooter released for the PS1. 
players can come across a file titled Report After Raccoon City's Collapse During Gameplay. The file, which has entries dated August 5th, September 30th, and October 6th, 1998, highlights some of the significant events we have experienced in some of the earlier games in the series, including the biohazard at the Arkley Mansion, as well as the outbreak in Raccoon City. Nikolai was noted as having authored the first two entries in various versions of Survivor. However, in the North American version of the game, Nikolai was also listed as the author of the October 6th entry, which described difficulties in acquisition of combat data in Raccoon City, particularly when facing off against Nemesis, as well as a hope that the collected combat data would be used to create more sophisticated BOWs. In contrast, in the Japanese version of the file, the October 6th entry was authored by the Umbrella BOW development team. This is a significant difference, as Raccoon City was sterilized via missile strike on October 1st, 1998. If Nikolai was the true author of the final entry of this file, and, of course, if the entry date is to be believed, this would confirm that Nikolai survived the events of Raccoon City. Resident Evil 3 originally was released in 1999, with its remake following suit 21 years later. Beyond the obvious graphical advancements came changes to the plot, and Nikolai was one of the characters affected by these changes. Dr. Nathaniel Bard, a character introduced in the remake, is first mentioned by Mikhail Victor when he directs Carlos and Tyrell to find and rescue him, noting the importance of the doctor's vaccine research. Sometime later, on board a subway train intended to transport some rescued civilians to safety, Nikolai asks Mihail if he believes that Dr. Bard is still alive. Intriguingly, Mihail begins to express suspicions related to Nikolai's inquiry into Dr. Bard. Mihail also remarks about how a group of UBCS mercenaries were ambushed by, quote, brainless zombies, and how a gate in the area where they were fighting was locked. Nikolai merely laughs in response, and before the conversation can continue, Nemesis attacks and kills the survivors on the train, allowing Nikolai to escape and Mihail to sacrifice himself in an effort to kill Nemesis. Mihail uses an explosive, causing the train car Jill is on to derail. Operating on intel that Dr. Bard is at the RPD, Carlos and Tyrell make their way to the precinct. Fighting through hordes of zombies and liquors, Carlos ultimately finds the star's office where he learns that Dr. Bard is in fact at the Spencer Memorial Hospital. Jill survived the train derailment and is confronted by Nemesis once again while informing Carlos of the situation. After a fierce battle, Nemesis infects the former star's member. Sometime later, Carlos locates and rescues Jill, bringing her to the hospital in an attempt to locate Dr. Bard and a treatment for her. Carlos makes his way through the location ultimately finding Dr. Bard dead from a gunshot wound to the head. In a recording that can be viewed by Carlos, Dr. Bard explains that he was an employee of Umbrella and had been tasked by his employer to develop a vaccine for the T-virus. He also reveals that Umbrella had decided to kill all of their researchers as part of their effort to destroy any evidence that could potentially link them to the Raccoon City outbreak. Dr. Bars states that the date and time of the recording is September 29th at 11 p.m. He is ultimately interrupted by someone off camera, and while Carlos doesn't appear to speculate on who the murderer may be, Jill, after having been given the vaccine located by Carlos, can make her way to the lab where Dr. Bard's body is and will comment that Nikolai must have been the person responsible for killing him. According to the unfinished activity log, a file Jill finds in the underground storage area connected to the hospital. Nikolai reported infiltrating Raccoon City on September 26, 1998 and engaging in a number of activities including observations of various groups of survivors and how they fared against the infected, as well as luring infected dogs towards Raccoon City University. He collected samples and video footage and reported on Jill's infection at the hands of Nemesis. Jill makes her way to Nest 2 an umbrella facility whose research primarily focused on T-virus vaccine development as well as weapons intended to suppress BOWs. Interestingly, Jill comes across a file that was presumably dropped by Nikolai on the walkway above the room where she had her final confrontation with Nemesis. 
The file describes an arrangement where Nikolai was offered a reward by an unnamed client for sabotaging Umbrella's attempts to destroy evidence of their involvement in the Raccoon City incident, as well as to obtain combat data. Intriguingly, the arrangement allowed for Nikolai to continue to be paid by Umbrella as well. Jill makes her way to an elevator to catch up to Carlos, as she had sent him ahead to pursue Nikolai, who had taken a vial of the T-virus vaccine she had obtained from the facility. Jill had been informed by Tyrell that the vaccine was needed as a bargaining chip to prevent the U.S. government from launching a missile intended to neutralize Raccoon City. Jill reaches the roof of the facility, finding Carlos on the ground by a helicopter. She is immediately attacked by Nikolai, who throws the vaccine vial he had taken, seemingly giving it back to her before shooting it. Nikolai explains that he didn't care about the possible implications of destroying the vial, and goes on further to state that his client ordered him to, quote, reduce Umbrella to rubble. Nikolai bids goodbye to Jill, but before Nikolai can shoot the STARS member, Carlos comes to and begins to fight Nikolai, ultimately gaining the advantage and beckoning Jill to shoot him. Jill does so, and she and Carlos proceed to board the helicopter nearby after Nikolai refuses to inform her of his other client's identity. The monitor tells Jill that he will let her know who this client is if she agrees to let him board the helicopter. Jill refuses, mentioning that she doesn't mind getting to the truth with a little detective work, and leaves Nikolai on the helipad, presumably to be killed via the missile that was on its way to Raccoon. Is Nikolai dead? The answer changes depending on decisions the player makes in the original Resident Evil 3. As mentioned previously, Nikolai could either be killed by Nemesis or by Jill shooting down his helicopter. As an alternative, Nikolai could escape via the aforementioned helicopter. Interestingly, the RE3 remake leaves room for Nikolai to have escaped after his final confrontation with Jill and Carlos. Notably, a careful observation of the events that took place on the helipad reveals that a second helicopter was there as well. Is it possible that Nikolai boarded that second helicopter and escaped from the Doom City? Future Resident Evil titles may shed light on this. Who was Nikolai's other client? As described previously, players can come across a suspicious contract memo in the RE3 remake describing an unnamed client's order to sabotage Umbrella's attempts to destroy evidence linking them to the Raccoon incident. From this file, we can deduce that the motive for this was to damage Umbrella's reputation and take advantage of this in order for this unnamed client to gain their market share. This sounds notably similar to the motivations of Albert Wesker, a former Umbrella employee who decided to abandon the corporation after years of research and work in favor of seeking employment at a rival company. Is Wesker therefore Nikolai's client? Perhaps a future Resident Evil game may confirm or refute this. Have I missed an interesting fact about Nikolai? Please leave a comment. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe to be notified when the next episode of this series is uploaded. We can also hang out in my Discord server and during my Twitch live streams. Unless indicated in the video, I've referred to the original versions of in-game files, relying on resources such as projectumbrella.net for their translations in order to avoid any localization errors. Catch you guys next time.